In this video, we're going to look at some of the consequences for the fact that our magnetic field does no work on a charged particle moving in the magnetic field. So once again, I'm going to have a uniform magnetic field facing into the page. I'll label it B. Um, this time, I think I'll have a negatively charged particle, um, negative Q, and it's going to be traveling towards the B field. Once it enters the B field, of course, we're going to use the right-hand rule or the left-hand rule if you want, because it's a negatively charged particle, to find the direction of the force on that particle. So using my left hand here and pointing my left fingers in the direction of the velocity and curling my obviously deformed and strange-looking left hand downwards, I see that the force on this particle is downwards, which as we mentioned briefly in yesterday's video, means of course that the particle will move in a circular path like this, because there's going to be a force initially downwards, and as the velocity changes a little bit, that force will continue to be tangent to the circle. This, of course, is a hallmark of centripetal force and circular motion. So what I can immediately do um, is associate my magnetic force, Fm, with my centripetal force, Fc. So I can set the magnitude of the charge times V, B sine of the angle between the velocity and the field equal to mass times speed squared over radius. And you can do a couple of different things with this. The most common thing to do is to solve for what's called the cyclotron radius. If I just stop for a second and pretend that my angle of phi is just 90 degrees, so I'll just make this whole thing equal to 1, then I can immediately solve for my cyclotron radius r, which is the radius of that path in which the charged particle is moving, and r is going to be equal to mv over qb. Um, you might notice, though, the thing in the numerator is the magnitude of the momentum of the particle over the charge times the magnetic field. Something else I might want to know might be the period of orbit, if the uh, particle is just orbiting around in that magnetic field. To do that, I'm probably going to solve that expression for the speed v, and my speed v is going to be qrb over the mass, and my speed v is also, of course, going to be equal to the circumference of the orbit in which it's traveling, 2 pi r divided by the period t. So if I just solve this expression for the period t, I'll find that the period of orbit is going to be 2 pi m over qb. Interestingly, this is independent of the radius. Once I know the period t, of course, I can solve for things like the frequency of orbit. So frequency is 1 over the period. So that's just going to be qb over 2 pi m. Or I might want to know the angular frequency omega, which is 2 pi times the frequency. So that's just going to be the charge times the magnetic field over the mass of the particle. Notice all of these things don't depend on the speed of the particle and do not depend on the radius of the orbit. What if we have a charged particle, though, where the velocity is not perpendicular to the magnetic field? So let's say, for example, we have a magnetic field pointing straight up into the page, sorry, straight vertically upwards, so that would be on the y-axis, and I have a particle whose velocity is not on either the x or the z-axis, but it's kind of partly on the x-axis, kind of partly on the z-axis. What I should do in this case, of course, is I should decompose the velocity of my particle. So if I have a right angle here, I'm going to decompose the velocity of the charged particle into a component that is parallel to the magnetic field and a component that is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So this would be v parallel and this would be v perpendicular. v perpendicular is the one that will determine how the sort of the rate of circling um, how fast the thing is going to go in a circle, but as the particle gets pulled around by the magnetic field, if I try and draw the path, it's going to be pulled in a circle by the magnetic field, but because it has this V perpendicular component here, excuse me, the V parallel component, what it's going to do, because of this component, it is going to continue moving upwards as it circles. So you'll get 
oops, I obviously clicked highlighter. You'll obviously get a helical path instead of a circular path. Um, what you might want to do, in fact, what I think you are going to want to do on a couple of problems, is you can determine the radius of this path by using the cyclotron equation and v perpendicular. And what you can also do is determine how far apart one circle is from the other. And this vertical distance between one point on the circle and the point directly above it on the next circle is called the pitch of that helical path. And that, of course, you can determine by how far it moves v perpendicular. Sorry, how far, if I call the pitch p, then that distance is just going to be v parallel times the period that you determine from v perpendicular. As you guys did yesterday, once you're done watching this video, please take a copy of the worksheet from the substitute, finish all problems, whatever you don't finish in class, you do have to finish at homework, and the solutions are also going to be linked on this website below. Have fun!